So welcome to the Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioners meeting for November 9th, 2022. It's 7.30 p.m. This is a hybrid meeting, Zoom and main meeting room at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions um, of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2023. Please note that while an option for remote attendance or participation is being provided as a courtesy of the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technical problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with uh, particular interest in a specific item on this agenda should make plans for an in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation listed on the agenda. There's a, a toll-free number if you want to dial in is 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580, and the passcode is 570012. On the Deerfield uh, website, down at Deerfield website, you'll see this meeting listed by the calendar, and you can click on the link there. Um, you get a copy of the agenda. You can click on the link for a Zoom and join us by Zoom. Um, so everybody should mute until they're speaking, and just state your name when you, when you um, want to speak. And um, if you're on your phone, you can hit star six for uh, mute and unmute on your landlines. So I'll call the meeting to order. And uh, generally we have a public comment um, section and generally we're gonna, you know, generally we would, um, we would probably hold off on, on that because we're really actually just having a group discussion today uh, on one topic. And as, after we have our meeting, <coughs> Um, on this topic where we just have um, two items to, to deal with, which would be a one day liquor license for beer and wine and uh, for the Tilton Library for December 1st. So, and then I think we have a signature that we need to vote on for the off premises uh, wine and malt beverage license for um, the neighbor store on 116 that we had the hearing last meeting. We just have to sign that. So, um, with that, I will open the meeting for discussion. So, um, do you want me to start? Does anybody else want to? Jim, um, Carolyn, do you want to start, or do you want me to kick the meeting off? I, I think it's probably just easy to say what what do we want to accomplish? What's our goals and objectives? I, I think that's really important to lay out and make sure that we're all on the same page, and then. How do we, yeah. you know, what, what are the steps to accomplish that kind of stuff? Yeah, and, and just to kind of set the table, we've, um, we've had a couple meetings um, just kind of beginning to talk about um, diversity and inclusion and, and hateful comments that we, we see in different, you know, e either acts of racism or, you know, um, swastikas that we find in town or just, you know, and, and lately we've, you know, had discussions on social media, hurtful comments here and there. So the idea is to kind of pull the group together. And we've been having a couple of meetings over over the month or so, and we were trying to get past town meetings so we could take some time and really just focus on this one topic at a select board meeting without all the other business that we normally do. Um, so the idea is to kind of, uh, I, I know Deerfield Inclusion Group had sent in a list of kind of questions about how we form this group. We, we uh, as a select board, wanted to, again, talk about the goals, what we're trying to um, accomplish here, and how do we want to go about um, developing a charge for this, this group, um, and then um, talk about how we'd want to advertise the, the spots, how many people we think should be on this group, and advertise the spots so that we could collect um, you know, applications of people that may have heard about it online or is, is part of the discussion already that would like to serve together and really talk about what are we trying to achieve? How do we think we'll do that? And um, 
you know, just kind of create some some guardrails here. Do you want to? Uh, so, Trevor, um, what I'd like to suggest um, is to let um, <clears throat> a spokesperson. I don't know if it's going to be Deborah Yaffe or if it's going to be a group. Um, just talk us through this document that they prepared. Um, and uh, there are some things that, uh, you know, I have some thoughts about, uh, but since they've done all this work, I'd like to just give them a chance to take 10 minutes and, you know, go through point by point and sort mm -hmm. of talk about what your, what your thoughts are. For sure. We, we can definitely do that. And we, we've kind of set out aside like an hour tonight to just kind of have this discussion and we'll regroup again, but, um, see how far we get tonight. So anybody here to listen? So anybody want to speak up? Grant? Hey, Grant. Yeah, thank you, Grant. Grant. Your hand, Sean. Yep. Yeah, Grant by Alec. You know, we had at DIG as a group, um, we had discussed a little bit about how we might split up some of our talking points. And um, I'm happy to, to start with a little bit of an introduction and first just to thank you to the select board for voting on uh, September 7th to pursue an ad hoc committee. Um, and, you know, to our recollection, maybe Tim was the first person to introduce the language of a human rights commission. And um, I, we, I really appreciate that and we appreciate that. And we've done a fair amount of work in the intervening weeks uh, looking into that and really do support the idea of a, of a human rights commission or an HRC. Um, we have found a, a number of resources that support the creation of human rights uh, commissions in Massachusetts. There's this organization, the Massachusetts Human Rights Coalition, or MAHRC. Uh, there's about 46 or so municipal groups and a few community organizations as well that comprise that coalition. And they provide guidance and technical support, and they have uh, regular monthly meetings too. So we're really hopeful that they will, that we will be able to engage with them as a resource to help us moving forward. Um, let's see, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, we've noticed in our research is that a number of HRCs do have a kind of protocol or application process. And uh, we, I uh, do have an example uh, from Amherst that we might be able to share later uh, through a link. Uh, their community activity form is available. So, you know, around processes like that and in more involved way as we go about setting up a commission or doing the work of the ad hoc committee, um, we feel like that's a really good resource for us. Uh, they are having their next meeting uh, this month is the 18th, Friday the 18th at 9 a.m. And we have been invited to participate in their meeting. It's a good place to ask questions that we might have and to identify uh, members of that uh, group from their various local commissions who might be able to help us with the work that we're, we're starting. Mm -hmm. um, also, I, I had an opportunity to speak with Daniel Cantor Yalowitz, who is the chair of the Human Rights Commission in Greenfield who I know from uh, previous work together. And, you know, he shared a lot of uh, their process up in Greenfield and a couple of documents that they've created, a uh, recent annual report that they presented to, uh, to Greenfield, as well as uh, an onboarding packet that they have for new members for their commission. So there are a lot of great resources locally um, that we can tap into. And we're, we're really looking forward to continuing this work with the select board to get us to wherever it is we determine we want to go. Um, you know, there are other things uh, that I, I might have to, to speak to as the, the conversation progresses, but I think I'm ready to, to step back and invite uh, the next person to, to share. Thank you. Great. Thank you for your comments. Hey, Sean. Hi, Hi I'm Sean. Um, want to echo what Grant said. Thank you for this opportunity to have dialogue together about this. And um, back to the first points that, that you brought up, Trevor and, and other select board members echoed about like making sure that there's a clear vision and what the mission is and getting everybody on the same page. 
Um, what I found most helpful in um, thinking about that is from one of the documents that Grant mentioned, the Greenfield Human Rights Commission onboarding document. They have a very clear mission statement talking about enhancing the quality of life in town through promoting understanding, appreciation, and respect. Um, their vision statement talks about consideration for human rights being embedded into decisions made in the city of Greenfield and also having every citizen empowered to advocate for the protection of their rights and the rights of others. And then they have some bullet points about what an HRC does, um, some of which we mentioned in our document, although we hadn't, when we shared our notes with you, we hadn't done a full round of research on all of the capacities of HRCs and looking at what exists in Massachusetts that Grant referenced. Um, so some of the things Greenfield lists for their HRC is promoting a positive sense of community and unity based on diversity, provide a forum for the promotion of dialogue, education, healing, and celebration around diversity, um, investigates, mediates, responds, and reports to the community on allegations of human rights violations and provides resources, direction, and counsel. And so some of that we had um, a little bit outlined in our document. So I do agree that the first step would be thinking about, um, you know, is it an HRC, which is, we like that idea based on the research we've now done and the, the network of support that exists within the state and the models of some other towns, including neighboring towns like Greenfield and Sunderland. Um, and then, you know, once there is a clear vision purpose for the the group, whatever it's going to be, I think that that could really help guide the, um, you know, the the selection process of people who want to submit a letter of interest um, for consideration and talking about representation on the committee and how we get diverse voices, um, backgrounds, experiences, skill sets, and so that's where I think what Grant alluded to, having some sort of form, some sort of very clear, like if you're interested, this is the mission of the group. So you need to be um, ready and interested in engaging in that work. And then um, as far as people's backgrounds and skill sets, I want it to be clear to everyone that we're not necessarily talking about your resume experience. It's talking about what are your lived experiences um, and what other background and skills do you have to offer um, such a group? And yeah, I'll stop there for the moment. Like Grant said, I'll have other things to chime in on, but um, right. wanted to start with that. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Good comment. Anybody else want to jump in? Uh <laughs> um, I went and dug up a note from um, our MMA, our municipal, um, Massachusetts Municipal Association um, conference that Trevor and I went to in January of 2020. Um, we were really impressed with um, Leon Andrew. He is director of the, or he was at the time, I don't know if he still is, um, he was director of Real. It's a um, um, cities and towns league of cities and towns, and it uh, that it's it's um, uh, racial equity and leadership. Um, anyway, he's he's that's what he does, and he and he goes around to towns, and we we were trying to figure out how we could afford him because he was like $25,000, but he does an assessment and then he works with the towns. And so what we thought was maybe we could get a grant and do it from the county level because all our little towns, he, you know, he works in bigger cities, but he had done Lexington um, and that was his example that he had used. And um, he had set out um, action plan that his, his steps and um, so one of the first things he said was, you set an example and you str strike the right tone. And so that's encouraging 
conversations, having conversations, but also having, um, you know, set the tone for a municipal government as well. And I, I feel like um, I have to say, I think our of select board of all the years, because I'm involved on the state level with the select board, we have one of the kindest, most inclusive select board right now to work with. So I feel like um, that's a huge asset. And, and so we have are doing that as number one. Um, secondly, as you listen well and you observe what really happens in your communities and you try to bring you know, people to the table. How, how, how do you bring your underserved or unheard groups to the table? And how do you build relationships and listen well? And so again, I think we try really, really hard. I mean, one of the groups that I think of that um, is, is invisible and I have made a real point to reach out in the last couple of years is our migrant farm group. Um, we've tried to address giving them COVID, mobile COVID clinics or including them in our clinics, making sure that, you know, they can come um, and, you know, address some of the concerns, you know, a few years ago, last three or four years ago, when, you know, they were getting picked up by, um, you know, the federal government um, and, you know, working with that community. So, I mean, we need more ideas on how to do that. And also how are we going to be effective? So, you know, that was one thing. Then the next one of the other things he said is you have to make a public declaration that we have zero tolerance. And so I feel like our statement that the select board made is, is very sincere and heartfelt and is clear that we don't, we, we have no tolerance for the kind of activity that has brought to our attention. And then the fourth thing is he talks about trying to um, dedicate some of the infrastructure of your community, you know, your town, local government, which is staff time and training time. So we have to identify some additional training um, that is more formalized and, 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 and make it part of our annual kind of activity. Um, and so I think that's important. I think we've talked about it, but we actually haven't uh, appropriated any money to do that. And so that would be part of, part of our next budget season um, that's coming up and that starts pretty soon is that we should put to, you know, put aside some training money and try to identify a training program that might, you know, that we could, that we could actually have and, and that would be sustainable. I mean, it would be lovely if we had $25,000 just to hire them to come in. This, this man was amazingly motivating and, and really good, but you know, that's not sustainable. So what can we do? What can we identify as sustainable training? And then um, the fifth thing is you, you commit to the policy change and, and system change once you've identified some of this action. And then, um, and then you create the sixth step. And the final step is you actually have, through this community engagement, you've come up with a, a, a real um, racial equity um, plan. You create the plan that's tailored to your community. And I, you know, from the notes that I had, I, I was really, um, I mean, I was excited about it. I, I, I'll have Trevor talk about it a little too. I mean, his, what, how he felt about it. But in, in my, my opinion, it was one of the best. Um, I mean, I've taken state training because I'm on the state commission member. So I, I, I have required um, training. I've taken that training. Um, I have you know, we've taken training on the MMA level. I, I just feel like this is one of the most useful um, action plan and doable for us as a community. Tim? So, um, yeah, I just wanted to say, um, can we switch back to listening? Um, yes. yes, I and... just wanted to bring up that I, I, I was really excited about this and I... Mm -hmm. No, no, I, I really support that. I just, um, did, did you have another uh, order of speakers, uh, Grant or Sean? Yep, 
Um, sure, I, I can. Yeah, I'm glad to hear you kind of talk about your experience, Carolyn, and um, and also just to mention, you know, farm workers. I think we um, Dig has talked about like a lot of different community groups that we could kind of reach out to and um, have input. Um, and also, if it's going to be a commission, you know, to um, advertise that. W one thing I will say, I mean, it's. I think it's a process, you know, it was really very heartening to look at the um, Massachusetts, you know, Human Rights Coalition and see all of these towns that have done, had a Human Rights um, Commission and that, you know, the advantage of the Human Rights Commission is the support and then it's part of the town, you know, it's part of your structure, it's there and it can work in conjunction with the DEI, um, the diversity, equity, um, inclusion, you know, work that I know Lisa and the personnel board are doing. So that's looking at the town and also um, the equity group, diversity and equity group that's at uh, Frontier Regional Center and then community groups like DIG, you know, that's working. And so I think, you know, personally, and I'll, I'll hear from other people that the idea of education training is, is really good. I think that's happening on the community level in a lot of ways. I know that DIG has offered um, a lot of sort of educational um, programs and, and, but I think it can also happen simultaneously as if the select board, the select board has um, made the anti-hate statement and I'm looking forward to seeing that, you know, on the website. And so that's, uh, one action. And then the Human Rights Commission, I think, is also saying we are creating safety that a, a lot of these works can happen um, simultaneously, right? And um, so, yeah. Um, what else? And I think, you know, just going back to the points when we're addressing, you know, several times we dig members, our, our group has talked about creating safety and that we're reaching out of all in all the human rights commissions they're all looking at addressing discrimination right on all different levels and how you address that i mean is really the human rights commission has to be a place of safety where people can come who have complaints who have issues um and can feel like they're being heard right so um a lot of the commissions are looking at like having at least nine members having three year rotation. If it's under the purview of uh, the town, um, then, you know, there's a selection process there and the application, um, these templates, this application, which I can send to you, mm -hmm. um, you know, will give you a lot of information. So I, I don't know if you had any kind of questions or, um, about the outreach process, about who would be in the commission, about a commission versus an ad hoc committee. I think did kind of, we sort of are an ad hoc committee right right here, you know, all of us together um, working towards this, so. Just, I, I guess I, I feel like um, I, I would like to learn a bit more about the human rights, you know, um, commission, you know what it does what the deliverables are mm -hmm. what actions they take what what impacts they've made in the other communities like we've developed it you've got a statement but what what, what is the you know when the you know rubber meets the road like what happens mm -hmm. what is what is the mechanics of that how does that interact with the town um you know we're we're very slim staff at this town and we have we barely have enough staff to keep like the lights on and bills paid and like it's it's super hard to run a town in a small mm -hmm. in a small little town so how do we fit that in um you know I, I envision that group kind of doing stuff that you know will help the town and 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 find ways to work together that would be um advantageous to to the community that mm -hmm. you know um because i mean if, if people really understand how the town works like the staff that works here and what they do and right. it, it's so under <laughs> it's so understaffed 
and mm -hmm. um, and so we think about how do we you know, like every time we think about grant oh this is a great grant and then we're like mm, we have nobody to process it nobody to do anything about it um, so it takes this community to come together and you know we see it in other other aspects the CCI group that really is every, one member from every board kind of comes together and you know talks about what they're working on and this group can have you know a representation there about what what we're doing there and and so every every committee and board member in town knows what this group's working on and i think that's important and i i kind of want to not um i'm not looking to slow walk the process i just want to kind of I, I i appreciate like finding that the ideas and what's greenfield doing looking at that application process mm -hmm. what are they what do those onboarding packets look like because that sounds like a great idea um and then how do we get uh, diversity of thought? Like, is it, um, you know, I feel like DIG is a safe place for people to come and have discussions and everybody kind of supports each other. And then I, as I said originally in the meeting that I feel like we need to create a subgroup that is willing to have really hard conversations and, and listen to, you know, we've had these, uh, the reason I made a post on Deerfield now, Lou reached out to me and had said, you know, hey, have you seen what's going on in Deerfield now when there was mm -hmm. a post about a, you know, what you should or shouldn't wear, you know, for for kids for or anybody for dressing up in Halloween and what kind of nerve that struck in the community. And there's been others too, um, mm -hmm. comments about, you know, my child is part of the dig inclusion group at school and, you know, what kind of nerve that was having and and the and really, I felt heartened about the community coming together and saying, what a great program that is. And hey, you should be proud of your child and different things like that. Are, um, yeah. So there's this undercurrent going on in the community and we see it nationally, right? We've just had an election last night and like, what does that mean? And what did we shun and what did we accept? And there's so many um, bigger uh, discussions going on. And I wonder how do we pull in people that do not think this is a good idea mm -hmm. uh, how do we how do we eventually reach the people that we want to reach so we don't so that they can learn that those comments are hurtful um we may not re meet them all we may reach a couple i mean i think one is better than none and i feel like the more we could have conversations that we're not looking to shame we're looking to teach and how do we pull in people that are thinking about these things um, and, and, and we can learn why they are getting triggered when they see a post that's pretty innocuous, you know, and um, so I look to understand how do we form a group to have those deeper conversations, because um, I feel like I want action. And um, and I feel like, again, a lot of us probably agree. I have a ton to learn and grow. Just I will um, just based on my upbringing and, and what I know and how I've been raised, um, I have a lot to learn and grow, but um, I'm a, I, I feel personally, I'm more aware than some, and I feel like I could help try to bridge a gap and try to bring, I don't know, bring some kind of um, education to people. I mean, I need help being educated, but I still feel like there are others that we could bring around to kind of understand why why it's hurtful to have comments like that on Deerfield now. And I know Tim's going to say, stop talking and listen again. <laughs> but his hands up. No, I'll let him talk. Go ahead. No, um, Sean, do you want to chime in? I just, oh, I just want to make a very quick clarifying comment for the record, especially because I think this meeting is being recorded. Um, Trevor, you just mentioned um, the group at the elementary school that was posted yeah. about, and, and you called it the Deerfield Inclusion Group, and I just want to clarify that it's not. Oh. It's called the Diversity Leadership Team. Oh, thank you. It's, it's a specific diversity initiative through the Deerfield Elementary School. Oh, I said that. I just wanted to No, thank you for pointing that. that out. I talked to Sarah, um, or Mrs. Smith last night at the school committee meeting, and you know, just learned how that was impacting her and how she felt about that uh, interaction. And uh, she was very heartened by the community comments on that. But uh, thank you for clarifying that. So, see, so yeah, I still have a lot to learn. <laughs> so appreciate the education. So I wanted to just ask uh, to go sort of point by point, but if, if you have another person that you had lined up to speak to a sp specific issue, I'd want to defer to that person. <laughs> Um, 
Annie Curtis. Oh, Annie, yeah. I just, I, I, I know Grant has been a really incredible resource and knows a lot about what's happening in other communities. Mm -hmm. And I think that the connection that he's made with this Massachusetts Association who has invited us to learn more directly from them next Friday, it's a week from Friday, Grant. 18. I think if possible, if a select board member was interested in also being in that meeting to learn directly from these municipalities about some of these questions about what are the deliverables and um, and those kinds of things. I think you're gonna hear a little more clarity about that. And we can certainly bring that back, but I think you hearing it for yourself might yield a quicker turnaround and understanding there. So just an idea. If you can pass me the link, I'm off that day. So I'd love to attend. Yeah, I can, I can send okay. um, that link. And Is this gonna be a virtual? um yes yes it's a it's a zoom i believe right the link hasn't been shared yet but it will be closer to the date okay i'd love that grant thank you and uh, just to add to you know um daniel uh Cantor Yalitz and i also discussed you know kind of um visiting each other's meetings so he was very very open and interested in having us attend their HRC meetings and in also coming to our meetings, uh, whatever they might be, whether it's a dig meeting or some other venue uh, where he could be a, a part, or a witness and a, and a resource for the work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you, Lou, Vincent. Thanks. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody. This is just so hopeful. Um, I was a part of the Sunderland's group when they were trying to decide if they were going to become a formal commission or if they were going to remain a task force, which was their final decision in Sunderland for the time being to remain as a task force rather than a town commission. Um, and um, one thing I will say, they, there was a very thoughtful process around that. Um, but one thing that is um, was a, an interesting deliverable is definitely the education component of a, of either a task force or a commission certainly has the capability to be an educational resource for the community for town officials town employees and the community at large um and also you know i think the people that are going to be attracted to the role um as of human rights commission uh, member hopefully it will be people who are interested in doing things like learning intergroup dialogue and nonviolent communication, just because I think that these are things that are gonna, you know, be better tools to help in those situations where we're talking across some very diverse um, ideologies and things can get quite heated. And, and I think in, in just the very basic form, like this is, the time to create this commission because of these tensions are actually quite dangerous and it's a good idea for us to be like figuring out how to navigate that and how to hold some moral ground as well you know so that's all i wanted to add great points lou thank you sean Hand up yeah, I think um, when and as I said, you know, we're happy to send you the the HRC of Greenfield, their onboarding packet, but it does have a whole section on their functions. It doesn't mean sure. every HRC has to be the same, but they do talk about improving the quality of life through educational programs around increasing mutual respect, harmonious intergroup relations. Um, one of their functions is to respond to complaints by persons who believe that their human or civil rights, as defined by law, have been violated, um, to work with different town offices and the schools, et cetera. So they do have a lot of different functions within a community. Um, and, you know, I think one of the ways potentially to bring people into the vision or the mission is really focusing on human rights. And there's a lot that people might be able to agree upon in terms of like, you know, being free of harassment within your community or having the right to peaceably assemble or, you know, whatever you want to be talking about when you're talking about human rights. But um. I hear what you're saying, Trevor, about how do we, how do we 
actually improve some of the divisions and tensions within that can exist within our town. Um, and one of my answers to that is simply that it's a long game. Like, Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. and, you know, I think about last year, I think it was a collaboration between the Frontier Regional School District and the Collaborative for Educational Services um, joined together to present community dialogue with the Tilton Library on culturally responsive teaching, mm -hmm. which as we know was a very hot button topic in the media and in our country. Yep. Um, and many of us who attended felt disappointed that there weren't more differing views and opinions in those dialogue groups because the point was to really try to educate and bridge um, yeah. bridge differing opinions and ideas. Yeah. So yeah, I guess there's no simple or easy answer to that. Uh, it's ongoing work. Yeah, I ple completely agree with that, um, Sean. I think I wonder how, you know, will they be willing to come out from behind um, social media and really have a, a strong conversation and um, some may, and, and I hope, you know, but I, you're right, I don't know. My concern was that we all get in a room and all of us agree. I want, I want people who don't agree so we can, we can actually do some work and listen and learn and try to bring down the te temperature and uh, Deborah and then uh, Carolyn. I just wanted to say, well, I can imagine, um, you know, a human rights commission, members of the group going and doing outreach, going to the senior center, Mm -hmm. And having, you know, um, just a dialogue, listening, say, this is what we're about, you know, and, and bringing up scenarios. A, a lot of people, you know, don't uh, realize that, yeah, inclusion also means, well, if you're older, do you want access to the library? Do you want to be able to walk to a town building? Do you want to be able to hear at the town meeting? You know, right. things that are relatable, that right. this means... Um, yeah, that your quality of life, you will be seen and addressed, you know, everybody, everybody. right, um, that something isn't being taken away. Because I think that's, a lot of times that's, uh, you know, people come from a reactive place, something is being taken away from me, you know, and fear. So, you know, so, so we, as a collaborative, I mean, we get to decide how we want to do that, what kind of outreach we want to do. Um, it was interesting, Lou and Grant and I met with um, Amherst Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, um, a different department in Amherst, but uh, they were new. And so they were going and just doing so much outreach. I mean, they were, they were talking to us. We're in Deerfield. Why would they be talking to us? But they were going to like all of these different departments, um, you know, and um, and just having discussions and um, and so I thought I thought that was really good, you know, being proactive. Yeah. And um, so I think a commission could really be uh, serve Deerfield and serve the town, serve the select board, right? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, okay. I think that's all I wanted to say right now. Thank you, Carolyn. You had your hand up. I. I... Don't want you to think I only do MMA stuff, but one of the things <laughs> in MMA uh, in their January of 21 um, was their, one of their keynote speakers was Rissa Grant. And she was really, again, very inspirational. And, and her whole message was, how do you make them part of the team, you know, make everybody part of the team and how you do intent, be really intentional about your actions and inclusive and, you know, it, it's along the lines that everyone is talking about, but she was excellent. And again, was really inspired by listening to her on try to bring in, you know, your both sides of your community and try to get people to have conversations. And that I, I felt, you know, you could think the way she was going through her examples, just like you just did. Um, you know, there are ways that we can try to do outreach and 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 bring people to the table again but she was again a very excellent speaker and i i think it's it's if there was a way that we can have some inspirational 
person come and talk to us. I think that is, is really what gets people on the same page and working together. I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to figure out how we can do this. Tim and then Lisa. Actually, let me defer to Lisa. Well, please, okay. And then I'll speak. Sure. Hi, I'm Lisa Middens at North Main Street. Um, I'm on the personnel board and I just wanted to uh, report that Casey um, has stated that the in intention of applying for a grant to utilize the services again, possibly of the, um, the Center for Municipal Government at UMass Boston, that they were, they sent us a really good consultant to help us look at our job descriptions and our pay grades and um, steps and helped us, helped us up, you know, get those to be more equitable and also within, you know, paying people within market rates. So that that's something that we've been talking about in the personnel board. And then I think that, you know, turning, changing people's hearts and minds is a, is a laudable goal, but for me, DEI is about you know, the leadership of the of a town and the government of the town state, you know, stating that they are anti-racist and that they value inclusion and you're not the, to, to actually change people's inner belief systems is probably a stretch for most people. There, for many people, you're not going to get them to change their mind, but they might change their behavior if they see that it's not acceptable to to behave in a in a racist, hateful way. And also, and so also, a DEI plan for the town would include education, definitely for employees and trainings. And there's you know there's laws around not harassing people based on their race or you know the social group that they're in or their gender or their sexual preference so it's about staying you know within the law maybe you don't believe in it but you have to follow the law or else you will be have certain you know things happen if you're a town employee or if you're on a board or a volunteer because people that serve on boards and volunteer volunteers for towns are also come under the same guidelines as town employees as far as treating people equitably and fairly and not harassing people on the job. So mm -hmm. um, well, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Well, I feel like um, I, yeah, I'm excited to maybe attend on the 18th there. And, um, and I think any any links or stuff that grant you could send to to us to, so i could dig into um you know I, I read through your your questions and suggestions and i'd like to um you know just dig into a little bit more of that information um and we could kind of regroup again and try and lay out a you know a charge and you know again do do we want it a task force do we want it a commission um that that would be up to um the select board to, to, to do. Oh, Tim, I'm sorry. I jumped right in front of you. Um, no, that's quite all right. Um, I was going to make some of those points. Oh, please. I wanted Thank to you. suggest first um, that we reserve the last 10 minutes of the meeting to talk about next steps and to try and maybe rough out a timeline of achieving the first step, whether that's um, getting an ad hoc committee to, to really dig into, do we need a task force? Do we, do we have a task force? maybe moves us in the direction of a human rights commission. I can see the value of having a commission um, and it gives a place for people to know where they bring these issues. Um, you know, DEI people may not understand in the same way as human rights commission. So um, I wanted to just drill down in a couple of things um, in the recommendations. One is really, uh, I, I looked up various communities, Amherst, Northampton. I don't even know if I looked at Greenfield. I'm not sure that I did. But all of the committees, as, as many committees and small communities have, they're perennial, perennial vacancies. So they have nine member commissions, but they're never full. So what's the correct size? Do you want an odd number or an even number? So that was one thing that I thought was interesting in my research. Also, uh, the suggestion that we would offer a stipend um, Typically, we don't do that, but you may, uh, maybe the MAH, is it MHRC, or I forget the, the acronym, maybe they have some recommendation recommendations around that. 
Um, but one thing I wanted to also ask is there is there, um, and I, I don't disagree with this point, um, but I'm, I'm looking through scrolling here. There was a, uh, a recommendation that, where is it? I'm sorry, there's a, I forget which, which number it's in, but it's a recommendation about how you, you would not necessarily want um, people like in positions of authority, like the select board member or a police uh, officer to be in this commission. Um, but would, would we understand that it's necessary to have a liaison with these agencies to keep them informed? Uh, you know, because there are sometimes when there's a cross uh, connect between a human's right, human rights issue and an actual enforcement issue. Um, so I just wonder, um, you know, if that is that something that the MAHRC, there I found it, could help us with. Um, and I really strongly believe that the the first the first goal is to create some place where there can be education, where there can be uh, an opportunity for people to bring issues to. So. Um, I see Sean has her hand up, so I will uh, let her speak. Yeah, thanks for raising those questions, Tim. At In our note document at the end of um, question six, we specifically talk about how the commission, we recommend that the commission and the town partner with each other in shared goals around making the community a place where residents feel seen, heard, safe, respected, and empowered to thrive. And we recognized here, while the commission may make recommendations in response to incidents of hate or bias, responding to such incidents is a shared responsibility with other town officials. So absolutely, there would be limits on the charge or the function of an HRC. Um, I think about an example like, um, you know, the anti-LGBTQIA plus graffiti that was found outside at the library this year on the picnic tables um, and thinking about how an HRC might be making recommendations for community dialogue after that kind of incident. They might be liaising, liaising with the police department around, you know, what kind of guards are in place or are there, you know, what kind of investigation is happening or what can we do to help prevent or respond to such incidents of hate and bias in our town? Um, so yes, that's all I have to say on that. Thank you. Um, Grant? Yeah, I might just add a little bit. I, I, a number of those questions, Tim, looked like we spoke to in our uh, second point in the, the notes that we sent you. So I did I see a lot of things here, there. But I just, yes, so you are correct. To bring it out into the public. <laughs> I think in in general, um, you know, the idea of running questions like those by the the Mass Human Rights Coalition is a wonderful idea, and also you know, consulting with whichever groups we might through them or through other connections. Um, start to work with, you know, when I spoke with Daniel Yalowitz, we did talk about the size of their commission, which is also set at nine, and they've had six with three vacancies for quite some time, right? So exactly that situation that you described. And, um, you know, as I recollect, but uh, don't hold me to this, you know, that's something that they were wanting to examine, because it was, uh, and they, they kind of had to have they even might have been at five members, it's like they needed everybody to show up to have a quorum. Right. So it's a real consideration, especially, you know, taking forever, you're 100 percent right. Right. People are, are pinned um, with not a lot of extra energy or time to go around, um, you know, and in, in to, to your point about. Uh, who is and who isn't on the commission itself or the task force or whatever it ends up being um, great things to get feedback from, of course. And I think, you know, in, in our uh, way of 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 seeing the commission, it was important. And that's why we recommended that it be a, a place separate from those um, authority figures, you know, whether they're police or the select board, so that we're creating an alternative venue, right, for people to, to come with their concerns. But absolutely, yes, you know, as I think many people have said, working with every aspect of the community. So it's not to, 
exclude them from the work that's being done, but just to preserve the space as one where everyone um, whose voice we really want to hear and who might not be being heard or who might have a, an issue that they want to bring forward has that safe and protected space to do it. Yeah, so, so yes, <laughs> keeping it safe in those ways and working with those members who maybe can't sit on the commission directly. Yeah, I'd love I'd love to flush that out a bit too because I feel like you know it's the select board that kind of is involved in a lot. Absolutely. of what Happens and then in our police, I think of Jen and John who do so much, um, and they're the ones that respond or you know they're they're just like the go to. So it does feel like there needs to be this sub subset group that would have a safe space that people can come to and um, and you know and 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 feel safe you know talking about what's happened to them what they've seen how they've experienced what traumas they've had and a safe you know non-judgmental you know group of people they could come and talk to and then then can flip around and go okay well here's our team that these this is these are the town has to address so um how do we work together to you know keep everybody in the loop and working on these issues together i know there's a real want for that Oh, I yeah, just want. <laughs> okay, I, I just wanted to um, ask Lisa if you're still here. Where, uh, how is the personnel board doing? Or the last time we spoke, the personnel board was looking at uh, DEI um, measures, diversity, equity, inclusion. Are you still there? Uh, yeah. So I did yeah. mention that we have just. We're talking. Casey talked about applying for a grant to have a consultant from the, the UMass Center for Municipal Government to help us. And also looking at resources for our, our policy manual, because that has a lot of sections in it on harassment. So that's, that, that's all the farthest we've gotten on that. Okay, thanks. We, we, we've tried to do update the harassment uh, section over the years because it, you know, it's changed. It's how you interpret it has changed. So um, I agree that that's something that definitely needs to be looked at, at least annually anyway. So, um, Sean, I, I'll go ahead and say something and then I'm just, we're re reaching the last 10 minutes. Great. Thank you. Um, just very quickly, because uh, you brought up some questions around representation and membership, and you know, this seems obvious to me, but it may not be obvious to everyone in this group or everyone who then has access to this meeting, um, that the membership does need to be comprised of people who would be in support of the mission of either a DEI task force or an HRC. So responding to issues of hate or bias in the town, promoting and celebrating diversity and inclusion. And that doesn't mean that we don't want diverse representation of backgrounds, experiences, skills, um, beliefs, et cetera. But um, <clears throat> it's noteworthy to make it clear that the membership does need to be comprised of um, people who would be electing to serve within the mission and the purpose of whatever the group is. That makes sense completely. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if if your purpose is to, you know, be disruptive, then then that's not moving. It's not a positive thing for the community. Um, so it it occurs to me, in my experience, that deadlines are often helpful. So is there a realistic deadline we could set to get this first phase over with? Like, would January fifteen be too far away or not far enough away? Because I think you've done a lot of good work here and. Um, my, my goal was to get an ad hoc committee to really wrestle this whole question to the, what is the mission? You know, is it a commission? Is it a committee? Um, and get that all really decided and, and, and then, um, you know, but the first step is to get those people who have the time and the energy and the willingness to pursue those questions on a committee to make some more permanent recommendations. Uh, I see that Lou raised her hand, so. Yeah, I just wanted to address that just briefly in my experience that, you know, as part of the Sunderland group, um, 
the decision to not formalize and become an actual committee or commission within the town then remove them from any like actual formal relationship with the town. They are just like dig in a sense, only they do different things, you know, like, so that was, it's not like their select board or, or any kind of town management made that decision for them. They were a group of people who were contemplating going to the town and saying, we'd like to become mm -hmm. a commission, but they decided against that for the time being until they felt like they felt better prepared to do that. So that's just sort of like, that was just one model. I think like we, this sort of like quasi ad hoc committee that we are right now so far feels very aligned with the idea of looking at Deerfield having an actual commission. I mean, I think that's like what we've come to at this point is like our general recommendation right now has been, this looks like a really good path for our community, but we can certainly take more time go to the meeting on Friday, do more research and find out more about that. But that I would just wanted to state like so far with what we're learning, it feels very aligned with our community values. And it seems like it would be an awesome thing for Deerfield. So I'll hand it back to you there, Tim. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to, to push this forward to actual yeah. accomplishing something rather than just continuing to talk. Cause obviously we could do that. Lisa, I had a question for you. Do you have, um, as a personnel board member, do you have any advice for um, how to set up this committee um, to get us to a more concrete place about what we want to do? I mean, I, I, I think there's advantages to having a town committee, whether it's human rights commission committee, a task force, um, because then it's it's a town thing and and that's beneficial to the town because you know, we we are as a community making a statement that this is this is something that we consider important in our town. So mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm make, being coherent here. <laughs> You're talking about having a committee to to form the committee, right? Yeah, I mean that's basically decide what, on how, what it would be like. We've and sort of been doing that. And but, Deborah yeah. and Dig has have put out some good questions in a document that talks about that too yeah so right we have i have it on my screen over here but uh, yep. i printed it out so as and far as casey you would know that there's there, as far as just the committee to talk about forming the committee that doesn't have to be a formal appointment process or no it could be an ad hoc committee i would say that it it's much more um easy for people to understand purpose when you start with ad hoc planning to go to the next step just in my experience as an administrator but that's up to it, the board how they want to handle allows, it it does allow you a little bit more freedoms for meeting and stuff like that too it's not so rigid and, and people can kind of like come together and 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 kind of work on stuff it's not so like rigid on quorum and and all of that i think right. um and we can we can get we a plan to together and you know, start listening, you know, I, I when I was voting, a, a woman came up to me and was very interested in wanting to um, to join this group and um, was really excited about the work. Um, she saw it on on a post and was like, really, I, I don't think, I just think she really would be a great, great add to the to the group and to the voices. So um, I, I wasn't sure how I just said, well, send a, you know, send a letter to the select board, attention Casey and that you're interested in serving and I, I didn't know how to get that word out and and maybe our next you know I, I don't know how to do that in the next month or so to get more people to um you know we obviously have a an interested group here but we want more diversity right and so how do we get more people to want to come and be a part of that conversation and then we you know months down the road we break out and have these other more difficult conversations of subset of group to have these you know other other you know educational forums and all kinds of things but just at least kind of getting this together it felt like um i don't know how to get more people to to send in i don't think we've got any letters from anybody except for you know maybe grant and yeah sean well, I, I do think it's realistic if you if an ad hoc group could be assembled quickly, I think it's realistic that by January 15th, they could create a pathway of recommend like more clear recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So, 
but I mean, other you haven't officially advertised an Correct. ad hoc Not from the town. No, I we were waiting to kind of talk here a bit. Yeah. So I mean, I would think posting it on the town website and talking about it in your next select board meeting, and you yep. know, I don't know anything about how ad hoc committees are formed, whether there has to be a limit on membership or anything, but no. Um, yeah. Just a group, and then we just appoint them at the select board meeting. Yep. It's more informal. Yeah, Tim. Yeah, so um, you know the the only limitation on an ad hoc committee is the size can sometimes become a problem. If it's too large, then you know the deliverables take longer to reach. Um, but um, Lou, do you have something? Um, just quickly, I think that even with the formation of the ad hoc committee, I think it would be worthwhile to have some kind of template or some kind of brief application process because I, you know, I think that there is the possibility for interlopers and agitators who that's, that's not the mission here. You know, I'm not saying I want this committee to just be everyone preaching to the choir, but I do think it does have to be a mission minded committee that's looking at actually human rights and discrimination and racism and does not uphold those things, you know, wouldn't support right. those things. So I think that even with the formation of an ad hoc committee, you're probably going to weed out some of the stuff by having it be like, post it and say, please fill out this application to become a member. We'd love to have you. We'll, our, our committee will review these or something yeah. like that, you know? Exactly. Yep. Sounds right. Well, um, Oh, Deborah, Deborah. Heading. Um, I just wanted to suggest, I, I mean, I'm, I wonder if you do have somebody that, you know, you wanted to, um, who you think would want, be interested in working with the group that we have now. Sure. I mean, Lou, could they email, um, the dig email and we could get, uh, information that way. We have periodically, we have, um, sent out an invitation for people on the dig list, which is several hundred people to come and join us. So um, if they want to, but I wonder if we, you know, there's several of us, I'm going to go to that meeting on Friday, uh, the 18th. And, um, and I signed up and, you know, and um, we can go as people from Deerfield who are interested in um, finding out more and considering forming a human rights commission and ask questions. Um, I mean, and, and then if we could meet, I don't know if you have time to set up a meeting in December with us, or does it have to wait till January? Um, could we meet like once a month, set something up, put it on the schedule, um, to meet just so we don't lose momentum mm -hmm. and we're still kind of talking about it and keep it on the agenda. So, um, I'm not necessarily saying that this is a good idea, but I'm looking around and I'm seeing, you know, um, people who are really interested in this. Is it possible to pick three people or five people from the people that are here mm -hmm. and say, you know, you're going to serve as, are you willing to serve as an ad hoc committee to move this process along? Can I have a meeting in December, have a meeting in January, but the goal would be to come to some conclusion by a date certain um, about how we proceed, whether it's a task force or it becomes a, com a committee or a commission. I mean, I, there's some, the, the advantages of ad hoc is you can meet whenever you want and there's no open meeting requirement because really you're not making any policy decisions at this point. Um, and I would be comfortable with, you know, if she had the time, Lisa Middens being one of those people because she's already on a town committee and she probably has a lot of insight into how you know, town committees work. Um, but, uh, you know, got Annie Curtis, who's one of our Deerfield Elementary School com committee members. She's a public official. Um, you know, she might not be a person that, because of the things that you've suggested, a person in a position of authority might not be on a commission, but, um, you know, certainly. So, what do people think about trying to just get an ad hoc committee tonight and then? develop all of the forms and processes that we need for, you know, the next step? Or is this just not a good idea? I'm, I mean, 
I guess my only question is, is that fair and transparent to other town residents who might want the opportunity to participate? So, I mean, while there may be three or four or five of us who say absolutely yes, I would like an, I think it would be a good idea of an official invitation went out so yeah. that there's transparency around. Um, and what forum should we put that out on? I mean, obviously we can mention at the select board meeting, but I mean, okay. I, I'm not really a fan of uh, government by Deerfield now. No. Um, so, but it is a good forum for getting information out. Yeah, so, no, but I mean, it'd be bit, yes, it would be better. I mean, you list um, committee openings on the town website, right? Right. Exactly. So if it's posted publicly there and some random town resident wants to say, hey, there's a neat opening listed on the town website, you know, okay. but that that does keep things more um, clearly delineated between official town groups and non-official town groups. Correct. And then, you know, somebody could always link to that, but it would it would link to the town website to fill out an application or whatever. So it's. You know, just because you want to get the, get the news out there as as far as you can, mm -hmm. I think it's important to have a few people here and then and leave a, a couple spots open for community members that want. Yeah, I'm, I'm agnostic about it. I just yeah, wanted to see if there was something we could do tonight. But I, yeah, I, I I get the sense of like we've got a group who's ready to dig into the work. Um, but what well, do other yeah, people I, think? I mean, I just I wouldn't want people to. I think that's a good suggestion, but. Carolyn, what do you think? I think it's important to post, you know, on our web page. And, okay. and, I, and I, you know what? It should go out on social media and it should go out to your dig group email and, and we, we should send it out through our networks. Mm -hmm. um, so I, think, if I mean, to be realistic, I, I've been doing stuff for a long time and I have to say that January 15th is a wicked, fast turnaround and that's not even considering that we have all the holidays in between so i mean you have to have a couple weeks at least to allow people to participate i mean because it isn't something that you know you can expect people to turn around and do in a couple days so i i think we have to give at least a couple weeks for people to apply mm -hmm. um, and i i agree i think there should be some little form. We'll have to figure out something, but we should have a little bit more information from people um, for this committee because, I mean, the the intent to be aligned, is, right? We the intent is a is to create a culture of kindness and inclusion. So you have to be committed to that. You can't be a disruptor. I'm I'm, I'm I don't know how else to say it. Yeah. They we um, have plenty of other meetings for disruptors. <laughs> right. That's in the future. So, but I would say it's important to come up with. I agree with Tim. You always need to have okay. What's our timeline on this? But I would say sometime in February, end of February, is more realistic than July, Jan, January fifteenth. Truthfully, Hannah and Lou uh, and Deborah. Anyone wants to jump in? Just super informal here. Go ahead, Lou. Um, I was just, I would much rather see a, a small post in the newspaper than on social media. I don't really think social media is an avenue to post um, this. Um, I actually feel like it would provoke energies that might be contrary to the mission. Um, so I just would, I would request that we think about that seriously before it goes into a social media post and maybe think about posting it in the newspaper instead. Well, Chris is here tonight and he does write really good articles. So hey, Chris. Um, <laughs> the, problem is, the problem is people, not a lot of people get the newspapers anymore. Mm -hmm. That that's, I mean, that's just been my, um, experience that newspapers are not as reliable as it used to be. I mean, people can pick up this the articles um, on the internet, but we got to change that for Chris's sake. I know. So, I mean, Hannah, you had so, a thought. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my thought is uh, along those lines. There are um, there are some people. There are <laughs> more than just a few people here in Deerfield who don't have computers, right. and I think 
you know, putting something up in the library, putting something up in the senior center, um, sure. because you're never going to get the older people. So does, um, does the group of few want to come together and make a, an ad or a, you know, a, some sort of thing to post everywhere? I mean, if, if, does anybody want to volunteer that work? Tim's volunteering. So I'm, I'm happy to work as the select board point person with other people if that seems I'm like a good method to very grateful address you know public outreach maybe an application form yep. and maybe some small attempt at a, a mission statement to make people understand what, what the purpose it? of this is and and then we can come back together maybe we could accomplish this by the next select board meeting and we could have a plan yeah and um and at january 15th february 15th I'm, I'm agnostic about, you know, when the time is, but I was just raising that as an idea. So um, it, are there pe people that would I, like to I work can, with me on that? I'll start a draft. I can start writing up like we're forming an ad hoc committee with Perfect. the mission of advising the select board on the potential creation of an HRC. Thank this you, is Mark. what an HRC does, you know, a little mm -hmm. bit about it. And then maybe just a very simple um, Google form, or you're gonna answer two questions, you know, mm -hmm. why do you wanna participate on this ad hoc group? I think I think joining an ad hoc group, um, the vetting, if you will, can be a little bit more simple. It's not a permanent yep, commission. Right. It's not an official town, anything yet. It's an advisory group. Um, yeah. But I would... Would and I just really suggest that yes. Google, anything that involves interacting with a computer is probably not the way to go because okay. a lot of no people, worries. I use Google all the time and I still have trouble with it. And um, yep. so some simple printable form PDF um, or something that you can pick up at the senior center or at the school or wherever we think. And that'll be a thing that we, we can decide where are the places we want to target as possibly the most effective way to reach people. But I, I, I just wanna make sure that we, like Hannah's idea of the library and mm -hmm. you know some of the, like the maybe the post office or something like that is really people think about that. I think that's- mm -hmm. right here. So uh, sure. just to clarify, um, so we are agreeing about uh, forming an ad hoc committee, opening it up for community members who are interested in exploring and moving towards uh, a human rights commission and what that would mean uh, for Deerfield, right? And then coming back to the select board, is that what we're agreeing on? We're, we're setting up a process to have people who want to participate in this process of deciding whether it's a human rights task force or commission or some other committee, but, mm -hmm. and then finding a way to reach the community um, with a deadline of when you would apply by and um, and making it as simple to understand as possible and then sharing it as widely as possible and then making a selection. Is that what other people think we're doing? Yes. <laughs> Sounds good. And we're hoping to do that. I would put a timeline on that yeah. in, the, in the month of December. There's no reason that can't be decided. Right. I was hoping that myself and whoever else I'm going to work with, um, we would bring these small pieces to the next select board meeting so we can at least say in a- When is the next is select board meeting? On the yeah. 16th. It's, um, yeah, what is it, the 16th? Yep, next okay. month. And then we have the 28th. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't if, have it. If it slips, but are there- Two people that want to work with me, or there's well, Tim, I'll be the point person with you. I'll I'll work okay. with my colleagues on the call to Perfect. assemble. Great. Get their input on what I'm passing on to you, and then I'll pass it on to you, and you give it the stamp of approval or say it needs Perfect. revision. Okay. And yeah, I'll work on it. I don't know. If probably Great. other people here will too. Yeah. I'm Perfect. Is that okay with you, Carolyn and Trevor? Absolutely. Very grateful for your help. Yeah. Tim, thank you. All right. Um, We've got some you, Trevor. 
Uh, we just have some other business as well, but are, are we good for tonight? And unless you want to hang around for a liquor license approval for the Hilton, Hilton Library function. So. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank right. you. Nice to see I'm, you all. I'm yeah. sure you'll decide the right way on that. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Take care. Good night. All right. Thank you all. Have a good night. Um, so I would make a motion to approve the one day liquor license for the um, Tilton Library Fund um, Inc, which is the Tilton Library. Um, I will second that. Okay, and that'll be um, that will be for November uh, 30th and it expires December 2nd of this year. Um, can you, I would just amend that to say that allow Casey to use our stamp on that. Okay, and a friendly amendment to allow the stamp. And that is, this is for an invitational wine and cheese event on December 1st to provide information about the status of the library expansion, live music, appetizers, and wine. So it sounds like a good time. Mm. Um, all those- Casey? Did somebody second? Yes, and then there was a friendly amendment. I'll second okay. the friendly amendment. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great, and then we uh, I'll make a motion to approve the um, the off-premises wine and malt beverage license for uh, Kapoor Mobile Mart Inc. DBA uh, Conway Road neighbors. Um, we've we've approved um, all the other stuff. This is just the actual license. So the state sent us approval of that license. You guys had the hearing. Um, I think it was last week. Last week they yeah. processed it like that. So we have the formal perm or license uh, permit that we generate ready for the board to sign. Um, Trevor's here. It literally came in at like quarter four this afternoon, but we wanted to get on it because we're right in that transition with renewals. So they need this documentation. Um, can you can you use the stamp on that or no? You know, would Trevor, what did Diana used to tell you guys? I don't remember. I thought we had to sign them, not valid with authorized without authorized signature. Yeah, I, I think she told you. you you couldn't. We used yeah. to use the stamp, but we always yeah. had a vote that said we could. Yeah, I I don't think so. It. If we have quorum, two signatures yeah. by members of the select board, I think Anyone that'll carry them? the weight it needs to. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I can come down tomorrow and sign it. Or yeah, I'll, I'll leave them for you, Tim, on the desk yeah. in there. I've signed and thank you. Good to go. So, um, all those in favor? Oh, we have a second on the yes. off premises. Okay, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. No, no, sorry. Great. Thank you very much. Um, the last kind of un, uh, well, there was a, do we have unanticipated? Hang on. I thought I printed up. So, yeah. So, um, do we have unanticipated items? We were, um, I think we wanted to just, oh, I wanted to hit on a couple things. So the, um, during the meeting of the sewer um, project, I just wanted to have maybe Casey send out the change order that would Already did it. request it. Okay, to them to look over and we'll just put it on the 16th to, to look at. And um, so I sent said, the email to Kevin, Blind Carby copied the board and made sure okay. that he knew he has to show up. And that's for the uh, the change order for the sewer yes. uh, the sewer and that is um, what that is is they um, were looking to get a um, an effluent uh, sampler they have one kind of going out of the plant but nothing coming in and they've uh, secured you know the, we're using the grant money for for I mean the um, the project money uh, for for this uh, so it'd be a change order to get um, a sampler it wasn't in the original design but um, will be will be covered by that and then also. Uh, for paving for the winter it's all busted up down there so you'll see um, it's going in and uh, kind of laying down a, a a binder and a you know for, for the winter for plowing and stuff so um, that's the I had asked Trevor what the timeline was folks so he told me it's probably fine to do the 16th I think and it probably is Tim yeah. um Tim had mentioned another project that he wanted to talk to Kevin about. So Kevin's in for two I think actually, project I, I, discussions. I was just gonna say, I think we have to vote that pavement stuff because the plant's shutting down, yes. right? You're gonna talk about it next week. Well, oh, there's, there's a couple of things. Yeah, there's the pl uh, there's the paving DES at the paving. elementary school, DES side, side thing. Um, and we would wanna talk about- um, I just, uh, Can I just ask you about that? Of you, course. 
how how much of the loop are you going to do just half uh so it's really it's coming in from the road and it's that parking lot in front of the gym um yeah. bob lesko had already paved coming out of the uh the walkway out um, so that's all new and fresh, but the parking lot itself has a huge hole in it and it's filled with water. It's going to ice up. Um, so it's paving that parking lot and then the, the roadway going down. When they did the loop, they paved um, from the um, basketball court around to the end, but they never paved the one along the road from the school. And that one's all busted apart on the right. And it's just in bad shape and so before oh, winter, yeah, no. I, I was just wondering does it make sense to extend it around a little bit more so don't I don't have... Kevin didn't think it needed it they thought just do this for now and then we were going to come you know we were really going to start talking for annual town meeting or through the budget season how do we address the front of the school like the parking lot needs to get done there's a lot that needs to happen and um and also an IA called me today about a um, another crack that um, is dangerous on the back side of the building. And so Kevin was going to try and get over it. I, I left him a voicemail today, so I assume he got that. They were going to try and fill that in because we did a lot of filling in of cracks, but there was one that was missed or just maybe showed up or whatever. It's in the back of the building. So um, the IA who who takes care of the child in, in the wheelchair was saying this is a definitely a hazard. And so we we're hoping to get that fixed, do the other paving. I was at the DES. <coughs> last night they had um approved to, to split the cost with us so they would pay seven thousand we would pay seven thousand and the question is where do we pull that seven thousand from do we want to use the arpa or um i'm not really sure where else to do it other than kevin's budget and ask for a transfer from the finance committee well you're talking about numbers that you're mm -hmm. saying seven thousand but um doing that other paving is a lot more than that right Oh, so let me clarify. Yeah, projects Great involved because I don't. I, I would like to see physically. What are we talking about? Sure, I can. I can tell you that. Um, and uh, but yes, show you that as well. So there are. There was a. Um, uh, Bill Hildreth went and got a number for the whole DES property, the big, big parking lot, the building in front, and um, everything that's paved there. So he had a number for that and they were broken up in different sections. The only one that we were looking at that was more of an emergency was right when you pull in, there's a shed and um, and it's where kids get dropped off by the gymnasium. So it's kind of on the, if you're looking at the front of the building, it's on the right side. There's a small parking lot there where the, where the dumpsters are and where people park, there's a garage. It's just that square and the road going down that were immediate before the plants close. And then there's a bigger discussion on what do we do with the front of the building and all that other stuff down the road, which is a much larger number. And it was 14,000 to do this, this parking lot and that road and DES would put in seven, we would put in seven to get it done before the plants close. But yeah, yeah bigger, bigger discussion for later. Later. So Tim wants to see that. I think you sure. reached out to Kevin about that, right, Tim? I mean, I'm happy to go. Yeah, yeah, Kevin stop in. Meet, just yeah. I can meet, meet you over there. there. Yeah, um, pull in over there. It's not a huge sum. I just want to make sure, you know, what yeah. we're talking about. Yeah, and, absolutely. If you come over the railroad tracks and yeah. turn right, it's it's that when you pull in, it's straight down the end of that building next to the um, rain garden, all the way down to right. the end, and it's just to the left where it's right in front of the drop off by the gym. It's that square and that mm -hmm. long strip that was immediately needed. You'll see when you get and there. And then a repair in the back of the building, and I'll a small repair in the back. In touch with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. I'll Maybe he could meet you and run you over there and show you what we're talking yeah. about. Because if if Tim has a visual, it'll be easier for him. Absolutely, to absolutely. Just understand. So, so that those were just the two of the items that I had to talk about. But um, that's it. Anything else? I have a oh, question about the PCR is, testing. Yes, we were. Um, I, I guess I was recommended that we were done with PCR testing. We're not putting it. My recommendation is not to put it in the town hall. Oh no, we're not putting it in the town hall. Okay. Uh, I had several complaints and concerns from employees, so I sent an email to everybody about it. Okay. Um, yeah, I thought we had frankly, if we lose one person in the financial department, we can't do payroll. Yeah, we're not doing that. I, um, um, I was under the impression that we had said that uh, we were going to offer the same space in the uh, 1888 building, but just unheated. I, I had asked not unheated. 
Well, I mean, whatever the heat has to be to maintain the building so it doesn't have burst pipes. Bingo. Yeah, right. I had asked um, Alex to check with them and I didn't hear back from him. Okay. Um, there was some discussion or some presentation to me about making I, significant I, changes and doing it in here. I talked to the person, um, the PCR person who called me. Um, I could look it up on my phone. Right. No need All right. I, just, I told him that we had not budgeted to heat the building um, anyway. And it's certainly with the current cost of oil, we were not going to heat the building to anything that was um, probably above 55. So they, they, it's up to them how long they want to stay. Yep. I mean, I would imagine that it, it is still very profitable for them to doing when they're doing 10 or 15 tests at a time. So they might stay probably until December, maybe. Okay. So, my impression was that they they will decide when the weather gets cold and then yeah. and then yeah, that will be yeah. so let me talk to Kevin about like reasonable temperature over there. Right. Okay. I mean, you know, just again, so we don't have frozen pipes and stuff, but right. Yeah. I mean, the building has to have a certain amount of heat in it right. in certain locations in order to protect it. Correct. And I'm gonna also talk to Rick Weller. Um, from Mohawk about the cleaning. Carol. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Very so do we need a formal decision that we're not going to have to I PCR just wanted testing? some consensus and some understanding about how we were going to deal with it in light of some of the concerns that employees had presented to me. Yeah. We're good. Okay. All well, right. I so I will let everybody know. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any further discussion before we can Head home. Sorry, Trevor, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> oh, that's fine. No, I'm happy to happy to take care of business. And um, I'll leave these uh, on the, the uh, on Chris's desk for signature. Thank you. Okay. And I'll come in in the morning. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Uh, I signed the warrant tonight, so that's all yes. done. And turn that back in. I don't know if, do you guys want, um, I mean, you're, I don't know if anybody wants this. I keep doing that, but I, I always, I don't know if anyone ever wants to look at them. They're, they're available, but if you want a Tim or. Yeah. Tim, uh, if I've you need to look a, at them, you can have, Brenda can help you go through them. Yeah, I, I looked at Brenda's October reports. And, okay, good. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Sounds good. And don't forget, oh. everyone, it's Veterans Day on Friday, so the town hall will be closed. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to uh, suspend this meeting and <laughs> all this fun. Sounds good. I'll say that no, motion. We're adjourning the meeting. Adjourn. <laughs> all those in favor. Tim Hilchi, aye. Ever McDaniel, aye. Thank you all. Have a good night. Thank you all very much. Bye. Bye, Chris. Bye.